All right. I want to welcome all of you to another Strudel Media Live talk from our series Vantage Point. Today's guest is Vreni Hockenius, and she will take a new look at photo books for children. I'm quite excited about this. So I'm really happy that Vreni is doing this. Um, yeah, I want to thank all of you for joining. I'm Anya from Strudel Media Live. Uh, we offer live online photography classes. We also organize photo talks. We offer scholarships. We have a scholarship program for our classes. Uh, we recently started publishing photo books. We have a YouTube channel where you can view previous uh, talks. And our spring photo classes have been announced recently. And I just want to brief you, briefly tell you a little bit about um, upcoming courses. Um, all of our uh, photography classes are for small groups only. So most of our courses, uh, we only accept eight students, sometimes uh, even less, um, and they're all live. And we also have several photo book related classes coming up. There will be a course on how to create your own handmade hardcover photo book with Elizabeth Castaldo. And we will also do an InDesign class with Edward Ratliff. If you want to design, uh, if you want to learn to design your own zine or photo book. But we have many more classes uh, mm -hmm. and um, just go to our website and check out the schedule. Um, and uh, now I want to talk about uh, Vreni. I'm very excited that she's here. Vreni, thank you so much. I, I will just give you a little bit of um, bio uh, about Vreni. Um, she's a Vienna-based researcher, writer, photo book enthusiast and mother. And together with Thomas Wiegand, she curated For Kids Only, Exploring Photo Books for Children, an exhibition at the Hart Herning Museum of Contemporary Art in Denmark. She is a member of Reflector, a platform for the promotion, promotion of self-published photo books. And she is also the founder of Beyond the Margins, a book club dedicated to photo books by women. Currently, she is in the process of publishing a children's book on the history of photography. And Vreni has a PhD in cinema and media studies from Stockholm University in Sweden. So um, if you have questions uh, during the talk, you can simply unmute and ask Vreni directly, or you can type them into the chat and we will read them out. Sometimes we do it during the talk, sometimes we do it during the Q&A. So at the end after Vreni's presentation, there will be a Q&A where you can ask additional questions. The talk will be about an hour long. And um, yeah, let's get started. Um, Vreni, thank you so much for being here and um, I will hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Anja, for the uh, invitation that I can present uh, some of my work with here at Strudel Media. Um, it's quite exciting. I'm, I'm nervous um, just to uh, think that uh, it's so cool that so many people from all kinds of countries uh, can join this talk. Um, um, also some familiar faces, uh, so that's always nice uh, to see. Um, yeah, if you have questions, um, just feel free to interrupt um, or write the message, uh, write, uh, yeah, write it in the chat, as, as Anya was saying. Um, okay, so I will um, start. So yes, um, a new look at photo books for children. Um, when I started researching photo books for children, um, I had like the the a bit of a tradition to ask friends or anybody I would meet um, like what their favorite photo book was when they grew up and um, it really didn't matter but most of the people said I didn't have any you know good photo book as a kid um, or um, no such things didn't exist um, so so it was uh, even to this day it's kind of like um, it's not very common with photo books um, if you go into a, a any kind of bookstore, um, still most of the children's books are with drawings rather than with photographs. 
nevertheless, um, uh, there have been, and there's also, there have been much more than just uh, books of, um, uh, well, in a classical documentary fashion. So um, um, it's kind of like my, in my talk, I, I try to show a bit of the history um, of the photo book for children. And um, I realized um, there's so many um, that I, so many books I'd like to share. Um, so um, I might be a bit too brief on some. So if you're more interested in, in a title, you just, you can jump in and, and ask questions. Um, photo books for children. So, so what are photo books for children? And um, in my re research, as well as in the exhibitions, I really just used a very broad and inclusive definition. It's any type of book for children um, that has that that's photographically illustrated. Um, and of course, there is a long discussion on what photo books are and what not. But uh, for me, this is a is a practical term, really. Um, so um, there really isn't much previous research on photo books for children. Um, basically, I guess you can come from two areas or two um, traditions um, to study photo books for children, and that's either photo book studies or uh, children's literature study. Uh, studies and and really for a long time none of them paid much attention especially not the photo book studies like when you see all these uh, anthologies there's hardly any um, children's book uh, contained in these uh, there are very few um, essays uh, one of them by David Campany from 2008 and um, I give you here a quote, which is quite telling, I think, um, because, well, for starters, the title is Strangely Simple or Simply Strange, Photo Books for Children. Um, and in the text, he writes, even if such books don't merit serious consideration on their own terms, perhaps knowing something about the child's engagement with the photographic image might tell us something about the ways adults engage with it. So basically, I mean, what he is saying is that photo books uh, for children don't merit serious consideration in their own right. Um, only they, you can only use them if you're, or they're only interesting uh, to study like how adults um, relate to photo books. And, um, I think this is actually not so much, I think this is actually quite typical um, for um, a broader um, understanding within photo book studies um, that it really wasn't until very recently um, an interesting subject. Uh, there are also essays by Frédéric de Stirba or uh, Alex Soth also had an episode on his video blog. So there are here and there a few mentioning uh, mentionings, but only very recently it's it's well or gained momentum significantly. And also from from the children's literature side, um, there is, um, especially actually in the last two years, a lot of things happening, um, such as that you have um, Laurence Le Guin, uh, um, a French researcher who basically edited the very first anthology on photo books for children. Um, it's a wonderful, beautifully layouted book. Um, the only downside is that it's uh, in French. I hope there will be a um, translation into English uh, eventually. But the other is also like just just last last uh, fall, um, a German and a Swedish researcher. Um, published an anthology about photography in children's literature. So um, when 
I started researching for the exhibition that uh, Anya also mentioned in the introduction. Um, uh, I curated it together with Thomas Wiegand and it was uh, in collaboration with the Photo Book Week Aarhus um, that we could do this exhibition. And um, there really is so little to find uh, on, on previous research that we really had to do a lot of empirical studies, searching uh, literally um, the needle in the haystack. Um, and um, what we tried to do in this exhibition, what was important for us was that we would really um, show the breadth um, or the, the broad spectrum and the, how um, versatile really photo books for children are. And so what for us was also important is to actually um, find a structure, how you can um, well classify this huge pile of material um, from yeah over 150 years basically. Um, so a big part for us was, since there is not a canon established, um, was really to identify clusters where um, photo books for children would commonly appear and, and more frequently appear. And so there were these four clusters that we um, located. Um, none of them are really watertight um, compartments you it's really more of a guide you can you could of course put several books in several of these um, categories but um, we felt it was a good guide to navigate through the material so the first one um, as learning without words um, and that means like early concept books um, which is like for babies or toddlers um, very first books um, where you would learn about um, basic concepts from your daily life. Um, this is a, a more modern one. Uh, very popular still to this day, number books. Um, this one is from the 30s by Piet Marais, a very well-known Dutch uh, photographer and um, children's book uh, author. Um, this is an American example, an early one, where you, you saw underneath was a little, like the, the pages are divided, so you could flap uh, or, or flip through and see what the right answer is. Um, and obviously eight is probably not the right answer that we're looking for here. Um, ABC books, very common. Um, this one is from the 1930s. Um, um, this one is a Danish one from um, 15 years ago. And it works with collages. So what you can see if you know Danish um, is that all of the words that are depicted or all of the sorry, all the images that are depicted here really relate to words starting with a G. Um, and then there are mute books for older kids. Um, so books that do not use any type of language um, or at least written words, I should say. Um, a very recent one probably um, you may be familiar with this from Aperture, This Equals That by Jason Fulford. Um, second category is informational books, which is basically the old nonfiction um, category. And um, so like, again, why nonfiction on animals is a special or a special subcategory is because it's so common that you have animals um, like in this one which is one of the earliest um, color books um, um, for children uh, from 1922 in Austrian um, production. Um, we have books um, who deal with photography, um, like this one from the 1930s or a modern one um, where you actually uh, not just only get tips on how to become a better photographer, but also how to play and how to have fun with 
photography. Um, so the other then the, the another category is other nonfiction, including instructional books like this one on cars or cookbooks would be also a very typical um, category or, or subgenre. And um, a final subcategory that we used is the social issues, um, something that um, was extremely common in the 70s where you would talk about things like um, this one uh, is, I don't want to move, but okay, what do you do? Your parents want to move or are going to move into a different city, but you don't want to move. You don't want to leave the house and, and like kind of these um, problems discussed. And there's many others like this one on, um, uh, it's a German title. There's a whole series um, by these two, um, a psychologist and a photographer, um where um the title is but i am like you which is um on including um people with disabilities that they are actually also just i mean and for the 70s of course it's quite a big um step where they um then another category, another cluster is, is children of the world. And that was a thing which was extremely popular in the 50s, 50s and 60s, that you would have a um, series of books um, from children from all over the world, really. And um, an early popular one, or actually um, maybe not so early, but... Um, uh, one that is where, where you have, which was extremely popular, is is Elikari. It's a Swedish, uh, originally Swedish one, um, from Anna Brix, the 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 photographer. Um, she did, I think, like fourteen books, and she used different authors. So Anna Rifkin Brix is the the um, photographer, and she's mentioned first. And then you she would work with different um, authors, among others, actually also the, the famous children's book author, Astrid Lindgren. And uh, they did, uh, I believe it's seven books together, if not nine, I would have to look it up. Um, these were extremely com uh, common and popular also uh, a French version. I mean, they've been translated into many different languages. Actually, Elle Cardi and, uh, Noriko's son was also translated into um, oh, um, now I lost the word um, for Israel you would have the Hebrew there the brain does work a little bit slow but it works um, so it was also translated into Hebrew and so actually there was a couple of years ago there was a documentary film um, where the um, filmmaker was um, explaining how these books really um, were such an important part of her childhood. And so she looked up what, what they're doing today. Um, uh, bo both are um, existing people, which is not always the case in all these um, series. But, but uh, the other one is from Dominique Dabois, the one with the um, um, uh, igloo. Um, she kind of had very, um, interesting um, graphic layout and Colette Nast is, is another one um, where uh, yeah you would you would have like a really all over the world you would you would see how how a certain um, fictional or real um, child would be living the thing is these books have become um, they have been criticized uh, in the last couple of years um, because they kind of have a tendency to, um, well, show the kids in a, from other countries in a very, um, well, exotic style, often not showing um, like a, a bit of an ideal of, oh, it's so nice in the countryside or... or like you wouldn't, you would exclude all the modern things um, from these books. You would kind of project um, a a more serene, a more peaceful life onto these other countries. Um, 
And so uh, this kind of othering, if you want, um, yeah, has been, of course, not really, is not up to date anymore. So, so uh, in the exhibition um, with Thomas Wiegand, we decided then to also include a more modern take on um, uh, this, this theme of children of the world. And that is by um, uh, a Brazilian um, photographer, Angela Das, um, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, um, about um, the colors we share. So about skin colors, different types of skin colors, and that really white and black um, are concepts. And we're actually all kinds of colors. Um, and you see here in the middle, there's also a mirror as a way to include the child reader into the book. Um, and then the fourth and last category is, is fiction. Really, actually, the, the children around the world really is mixing children, uh, mixing children, yes, but also fiction and documentary tradition, uh, whereas these ones now uh, focus solely um, on stories and fairy tales is very popular. Um, I picked one from the former East Germany, Bulle Max, with, with, uh, from the 50s, um, with really beautiful um, collages. Um, again, because it is so common, a theme, you have stories with animals, um, like Dashenka, which is probably one of the most uh, famous um, photo books, um, still... Um, in uh, in print and I don't know how many um, editions and translations um, there are. Originally, it's a Czech book. Um, for German speakers, this would probably one of, be one of the most famous ones. Uh, Mein Esel Benjamin from the seventies. Um, another category or a cluster is stories with dolls, teddy bears, and other little figures. And in this you would have like uh, these famous uh, books like uh, The Lonely Doll um, um, as, as an American example, but also a more modern one from um, this Korean um, artist, Hina Beck, which is called Magic Candies, beautiful book. Um, another category is, is then also rhymes, which is actually quite common and also has a very long tradition. Um, to have to match rhymes with photographs. Um, and last but not the least is, is books accompanying films. Um, so this one is, is Pippi Longstocking. It's actually a book that I had uh, in German. It's one of the few books. I didn't have the Esel, the Donkey Benjamin, but I had um, this book and I loved it. Um, mind you that, of course, it wasn't that easy to, um, yeah, uh, look at on the internet uh, to, to re-watch your favorite movies. So you had to kind of uh, look into books um, and, and it's actually quite common. Um, also, uh, The Red Balloon or these books are um, a lot of them very famous ones. Um, so um, I just wanted to pick out a few historical highlights. Um, I hope you're still uh, with me. Um, of but... course we are. Really. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. It's so weird to, to yeah, talk into, into my computer. We are here. Um, but... Um, one of the earliest, if not the earliest, children's book um, is actually also a Danish one. I mean, uh, I, I am picking, I, I did pick quite a lot of Danish books. Um, and that's not necessarily because Denmark is so famous, but because the exhibition was in Denmark. So I, I, I had a research focus on Denmark. Um, but this one really is also uh, more broadly acknowledged. I have not come across um, a title that's actually earlier. So 1866 um, seems to be the earliest one. And what is interesting about this um, is that um, 
well, apart from the fact that it's very early, um, it also contains, um, the, the photographer is Harald Petz, um, and um, it matches, now I have to move the little photos. Um, um, it, like each, it contains six photographs and their album and prints glued onto the pages. Um, you see that um, underneath it's paired or with, with, with a two line rhyme. And these rhymes actually were written um, by, um, now how do I pronounce it correctly in English? Uh, Hans Christian Andersen, uh, which I assume is also well known in um, the, US, the US, but at least in Europe, um, he's of course one of the most famous um, fairy tale writers. And what is interesting, or I find it interesting, is that it's not that um, the poems existed or the rhymes existed and uh, they were matched with the photographs, but that actually he based the rhymes on the photographs. And um, um, this one I felt is maybe the most interesting. Um, so it says um, underneath here um, in translation, she was dreaming of elves in the corner of the room. They came when she slept with her fairy tale book. Um, what I find fascinating is really that already in this um, combination, you can see that um, it's not just a description. Um, you like the two really interact um, that you can't see without the text. You could say, well, this girl is maybe sleeping. And then there are these three um, uh, girls dressed in white standing behind but through the um well closed eyes for once and then through the text you know that it's actually only this girl with the um square dress that's um real whereas these three are elves that are only that only exist in her imagination so they're subjective um so much to a documentary and um, fantasy that actually is a tradition that already exists um, from very early on. And um, is it the first photo book for children? Uh, my my co-curator, Thomas Wiegand, was always very critical. He would say no, <laughs> um, basically because um, he would argue that it wasn't really meant for children to read. I mean, it was, as you can see here in this ad, um, um, it says here for Christmas. So it was it was um, sold as um, something you could um, buy as a Christmas present. But of course, it's not really clear whether it was intended as um, a book about children or for children. Um, the thing is, but of course, what we do know is that um, Harald Petz really also used this as advertisement for his studio. Um, so basically, he would he would use all kinds of groups, and then that way um, he would show that um, he's also a good photographer with children. Um, and of course, uh, Hans Christian Andersen was already then a famous figure. Uh, so it would boost, of course, the popularity of the book. Um, the book is very rare. It's at the moment actually on sale for, I don't know how many uh, ten thousands of uh, dollars. Um, uh, we couldn't afford that. So we did have a, a reprint um, as a Leporello in the exhibition. Then we made a big jump because actually in the exhibition it was also the same that that technology really didn't allow for a very long time that it was easy to produce photographic books in general and and photo books for children was then the same it really 
it started to blossom for the first time in the 1930s. You will get, they did exist earlier, but were much, much more common, much, much more varied uh, from the 1930s onwards. And of course, you, you have to mention Edward Steichen and Mary Steichen's The First Picture Book, which is one of the earliest um, photo books or, or early concept books for babies. Um, and um, Mary Steichen was the daughter of um, Edward Steichen, the photographer. And because she was very interested into um, modern pedagogy, she argued that um, photographs are much better for babies because um, they are uh, much more objective rather than the drawings that are subjectively um, obscured. Um, so she would she would make a case out of that. And um, um, it had a lot of copycats. And actually, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, that it's still very common um, to be used today. And it's also still in print, but it's of course, it's a reprint. Um, from the 1930s, I thought it was also interesting to include this book, which um, is a, a, well, it's actually Piet Marie, as I mentioned earlier, um, he's a Dutch photographer, but it's also something very common that you would use um, photographs and then make a text, uh, not just a translation, but, but adapt the text according to the country. So in this case, it was um, a Danish author that um, would write a text and um, the photos really aren't that thrilling. Um, so Wurz Egen Unge is, just means our little one, so our child. Um, but what was really intriguing is um, that it contained a, um, a preface. Um, and this preface, really explains you how you're supposed to read the book. Um, and um, I translated a part of it. And so this one is, ha, um, our little one is a book for father and mother with the child on their lap. What do the images say? Read the text out loud, let the child listen, and listen as well what the child has to say because there are many stories in the images, stories that the grown-ups simply cannot see. Each child who gets the book into their hands will come up with stories filled of dreams and fantasy from their child world. That is how it should be to make Piet Marie's images come truly to life. Um, so for me, this on the one hand shows um, that really yeah, you, it needs to get used to. What do the photos do in, in a children's book? Um, so that it was not that common, you had to explain it. Um, but also, of course, I find it um, surprisingly modern in the context of um, visual literacy, that um, it already here explains that photos are polysemic and you can read into it whatever you like depending on your background. I thought that's um, quite impressive that that was already um, mentioned at that early stage. Um, we're making a big jump um, um, and, and I'm only gonna briefly mention this, but I wanted to say that um, I would consider the 1950s to 1970s um, as somewhat of the golden era of photo books for children. Um, one reason behind that is, and again, this is a Danish example, but you can see um, that uh, color photography became much more easy to implement into books. So that was a big reason. And so it says, um, have you read all these books, um, uh, color books uh, on for children? Um, so that kind of made a boom. Um, and um, there were lots of things like also spin-offs with um, um, games that were also based on the books or as I, um, in the case of the penguin uh, pondos, which was also translated into many different languages, um, 
that in Denmark um, to this day, it actually is a, uh, a bank who used the figure from the photo book and turned it into a piggy bank. Uh, but it's not until um, hardly anybody today knows that it's a, based on a book. Oh, everybody knows Pondus the Penguin, uh, but uh, that it actually was created in a book um, is, is, is a knowledge that has been lost. Um, so um, one of the books um, that um, uh, is also very dear to me, um, and <laughs> it is a Danish one, but one that was also translated into Swedish and um, into English. Um, so in English, it was called For Kids Only. And that's also where we took the um, title from the exhibition from. Um, what I find um, interesting about this book is that in the 70s, it was also okay to go back to black and white. There was really both um, um, uh, had an, an interest in their own right, if you will, um, that you would typically, I think there is a tendency of more um, um, well, a, a more advanced pedagogy that you would um, use black and white images like the ones on the social issues, um, whereas uh, the colors would, uh, picture books would be more traditional stories. Um, and um, so this is uh, 500 pictures, zero words in it. And um, it is quite fascinating how the sequences, sequencing was done. Um, this is the beginning. So I, I figured you can, like you, you read it like this. Um, and so you would have things like um, associations. You would have little stories with the bear climbing on the chair and then falling down. Um, you would have, um, all kinds of different connections between these pictures. So you have these double spreads and um, some like you would have um, uh, the same theme, um, then you would have the same kind of um, composition or you would have opposites. So you can really study a lot about um, reading um, um, a double spread or a photo book in this sense. Um, and uh, what I found quite neat was that from um, um, eating vegetables or, or I think that's, no, it's fruit uh, to um, eating of course sweets. And, and then what do you do? Of course, well, you have to show if you've eaten sweets, do you also need to brush your teeth? And you can't see it in this picture, but um, um, it says on the toothbrush, it actually says Irma or Irma, which is um, a supermarket chain in uh, Denmark. And um, it was actually also um, the publisher, the first publisher of the book. So the book was published um, from a supermarket chain and then also sold from a supermarket chain. It is today, uh, funny enough, um, really a collector's item. So the prices have gone up significantly um, for good first editions, because of course they are a lot of times um, quite worn down. Um, the favorite picture that was also uh, in the announcement is also from this one. And you can see once again here how, how beautifully I find the sequencing is uh, by uh, the association of the smiles and the, the composition um, and then of course it's also a comment on you can read the comment on um, photography as such um, so one thing um, what I looked at what I um, discovered for myself a lot and which which we enjoyed also exploring further was to to look at books that kind of try to um, 
will cross over to not being books anymore. Um, and I think that's especially the case with, with children's books, of course, that really you can't always tell, is it a game or is it a book? And um, one of these um, items that we had in the exhibition was a beautiful Leporello um, by uh, um, Claire D, a French Canadian um, author. She makes beautiful books. Um, and it's not only, of course, that the format of a book, Leporello's, I guess in this forum, we know that it's um, um, easy to, to understand that that are books as well, but of course, um, it's seven meters long, so so a kid can, of course, play very differently with this um, type of, of book, not just flipping the pages back and forth, but you could actually build it like we had it here and uh, uh, in the exhibition. And we had, a, while we built it up, we had a school class passing by and, and they were like, oh, <laughs> like really excited about um, a book that big. And um, it actually also function as a game because you'd have little cards um, where um, you could then also learn how to um, what the vegetable on yeah both vegetables and fruits are um, so that you can play with these. Um, Leporellos are of course they have a longer tradition, um, so this is. Um, um, a very nice one from, again, from uh, the Czech Republic from 59 uh, by Ladislav Svatos. Um, another one I would like to mention in this category is um, by a German um, photographer, Gabriele Lorenzer. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I think like, in Germany, everybody had this type of memory playing. Maybe Austria, I'm not sure how that worked. Um, but I, I, sort of, I, had, I had the blue edition, so I didn't have this edition from 69. But um, I did want to put it into the discussion because for me as a kid, um, this really was an extremely important way to encounter photographs. Um, and and some of these images really are emotionally charged to this day when I see them um, because we played them so often and looked at them and looked at them and um, um, I find the the difference or or yeah between this game or then books isn't that big and so Gabriele Lorenzo actually also made several books um, such as the one we placed it here in the corner. And um, it's called um, Etwas Nichts. And um, apart from that, you could see that the aesthetics really are very similar to the pictures that she used for the memory game um, with the color background and then um, quite straightforward, the motif in the middle. Um, but um, it again, it works that you have these two um, different uh, states of the same thing. And then of course, a child can then go and discuss um, what's the transition, what happened. And, and etwas nichts means a little bit of something, but it also means something, nothing. So it kind of gives you an instruction into how to use the book, but there's always something. And on the other side, on the, on the next, on the left-hand side is nothing. And, and the variations of this theme. Um, this is again something that you would find also in, in today's um, um, picture books for children, um, where children um, where, where children are encouraged to find out aha before and after pictures. Um, and then there is uh, of course Tana Hoban, um, um, who made over a hundred children's books. Um, uh, very mostly in the 70s, but also very interesting on how she would um, use cutouts um, to that only revealed part of the picture, um, so that you could guess ah what 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 are we seeing here and then aha it's revealed, and then there's kind of kind of always a series of three images then like this image would be paired with 
a second image of something that's um, here, what do you do with it, or, or some kind of different aspect, but of the same um, object, and then it will continue like this um, throughout the book. Um, I'm coming almost towards the end, um, and okay, yeah, um, <laughs> it's also, uh, I hope I didn't talk too long, um, but um, about some current trends um, is that actually, I think Tana Hoban, who is not very well known in Europe, um, that um, she's there's kind of a movement that there's a reappreciation of these, not the least oftentimes female photographers um, like Tana Hoban. So there was an exhibition in Rome or Gabriele Lorenza. Um, she would have an exhibition. Um, and um, so it kind of, transgresses from being, ah, oh, this is just a children's book into, wow, actually, um, she's been um, an impressive artist as well. Um, I'm very pleased that among the current trends is, I think, really a totally different visibilities uh, of children's books or photo books for kids. Um, that for the first time at Polycopie, they had a talk and a uh, um, Jan von Holleben, who was very engaged and also an uh, author of many or photographer of many children's books, um, uses Instagram also as a platform to promote not just his books, but all kinds of children's books um, using photography. Uh, Laurence Le Guin is very active in the scene. So there is um, an exhibition coming up. Um, and uh, not just research and exhibition, um, but there's also, I think, when it comes to the production side, an amazing um, new experiments and uh, fun books that play with photography in new ways um, that you can notice. And uh, so Bologna Children's uh, Book Fair, which is probably the biggest um, book fair for children's books, um, it only started last year to, to have a specific um, category for photography or children's books on photography, even though actually the one who won uh, is a um, um, uh, not a, a book with photography, but on photography, um, funnily enough. So that's a whole different chapter there as well, of course. But also that Ainsi to pour la photographie, that they would have a, a, a grant for um, developing children's photo books. So I think there's really a lot of um, things going on, and I'm very excited to see um, both new books, but also more research on it. And um, yes, I would like to thank you, and I hope you, you don't look like this now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much and i stopped sharing. thank you Freni. thank you so much Freni. wow uh it definitely feels like uh you did a huge amount of research and i am sure you only showed us a small part of what you actually discovered um, because i know you told me that in in the exhibition there were almost 200 examples is that correct something like mm -hmm. that oh, oh, 100 but that's 100. still a lot. Yeah, yeah that's still, still a tough. Lot. It was a tough decision right. to make. Right. <laughs> so let's see um, if anybody has a question. You can just unmute and ask Freni directly. Let's see if somebody does. I have a question for the audience, actually. I would love to know who had a photo book growing up. I didn't. I had... The memory, I had the box with the memory where you would pair two pictures that are similar. And I still remember those images, which is amazing. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember having a having had it. So does, did anybody have a photo book growing up? Lisa? I did. Tico Tico. It's about a squirrel. It was a love story. All right. Black and white. I, this Tico Tico. I see that I haven't heard of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Jan uh, has, has a question. No, I just want to raise my hand because you asked uh, who, who read okay. the, who had a okay. children's book. But um, 
No, I had the well, the, the most important one for me was Psych Mal, which is a show me in English and was an, a sexual education book for children. <laughs> highly, highly discussed. Um, I think many people know or are aware of this. Not available anymore, probably never available ever again. But um, yeah, that was just my raising hand. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Christine, how about you? Did you want to say something? Oh, yes, please. Um, yes. First of all, that was so interesting and informative. Thank you. Um, I guess my question is, could you talk a little bit about contemporary trends that you're seeing? Um, I know you touched on it towards the end, but is it, do you, I mean, for example, um, it could be, you know, stories that are illustrated with photos, or it could be like the one that you showed from the Bologna um, book fair, the winner, which is more about the role of photography, perhaps right. in contemporary <laughs> life. Or I can imagine many other types of themes. Um, I would be curious what your thoughts are on that. Thank you. Um, thank you. I mean, um, yeah, actually, if, if people would like to write their photo books, what they had as a child uh, in the chat, uh, that's also nice. I'm, I'm curious. Um, it's very interesting. Um, it's also a little research we can do right there. Um, but yes, um, I realized I actually there's so many really um, fun um, photo books, modern photo books at the moment. Um, a clear trend of very interesting is that France is very strong uh, and so is Italy. Um, I, I try to ask the question why that's the case. They have amazing um, uh, photo books, very um experimental very playful um i think a trend is um yeah rediscovering photography as not just being documentary is is a clear trend um you have a lot of mixed media um, books going on um uh, to be honest i actually i i Thought I wanted to show you a, a lot more, and then I realized, okay, no, I can't. <laughs> Maybe a, a second talk, <laughs> but um, there's interest. Uh, but um, in general, I think what's really interesting is um, a little bit. I noticed this postmodern thing going on um, that you have that you include very different types of images, like you would include. Um, a photograph, a photogram, a black and white picture, um, a color photograph, um, like, um, and then with paintings, with prints, um, that kind of like a, a new awareness uh, uh, to teach children um, what sort of that that imagery is out there, and yeah, they're all images. Um, it's I guess a trend. Jan? Yes, um, uh, now I'm really raising my hand to say something. <laughs> um, I just want to fill in here because uh, I'm for the last years I live in, in France and because Freni, you just posed uh, the question why that is and why France has so many photo books for children at the moment. I'm, I'm looking very much into this for the last two years and I'm, I'm working with a lot of people here um, in Paris. So um, what I've learned so far, at least for France, that is, there's a lot of funding going into cultural development and particularly in modern, in contemporary development. And a lot of publishers receive huge funding for, for those projects. That's something that I realize is quite unique within Europe, at least. Um, also, historically, France has always been well known and, and really cultured that to invest more money from the personal side like people are really happy to to spend more money on, on good books photo books are more costly in production in general so um they're always going to be a bit more expensive and french people are more willing to pay that that's another big part and um i feel that france has at least not really given up on photo books over the last 20 years which i felt like at least in germany it's very, it was, and it still is very difficult to, to bring um, photo books for kids onto the market, mainly because publishers are just not used to that, are not 
educated for that, don't have personnel who can deal with that. So um, France has published with a few key figures all the way through the last 20 years and um, has never stopped. I think that's that's what I can say from here. It, Italy, I'm not so sure about, but Italy is also quite popular for more extravagant projects. And I'd call uh, for the book for kids still a bit of an extravagant project. So that's as much as I can give to this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, Jan von Holleben, um, it's really great. Uh, he does a lot of um, fun books, um, photo books, all kinds of photo books um, for children, uh, which which I can recommend. Actually, that would be also something, definitely. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I do think, actually, um, now that you... Um, talk more about France, I do also think it has to do with um, publishers, that they're really in France are like three publishers at the moment who really believe in photo books for children. Um, and and they, they are taking risks or I guess not so big risks than, than they would in, in other countries. Um, but yeah, that, it, that is quite obvious. Um, I think that there you can see that it's, it's two publishers doing doing these um, maybe three uh, photo books for children. So that creates, of course, a momentum. Any other question? While well, Freni is available. Um, Prini, has, uh, have you noticed the change in layout over time? I mean, you studied the earliest photo books and then you went into the 50s and then you went into the present. Has the layout changed a lot? I mean, you showed us a lot of photo books with large images, which makes sense for children. I'm just curious what people do now. Is it still the same, full bleed, uh, you know, to make it very clear? Is that or are there any other, is there anything that you notice? That's different. Um, um, I think layout wise, um, and that's a little bit of shame. I could, I could have continued. It's really impressive how uh, creative uh, books already in the 30s were, mm -hmm. um, like from Pete Marais and Duano and even yeah, famous photographers using um, uh, really um, cool layout solutions where we're like wow this is modern you, you would I would have guessed I guess that much more traditional and then you get you get into more experimental layout but that's not really the case um, um, I think it's it's really the reuse of photographs as photographs is, is something that I would notice so so it's actually also a framing of old photographs that are being um, kind of manipulated into collages, just parts of it. This kind of thing is more modern, but um, other than that, I can't see, say any general um, changes into what, what when it comes to layout. Okay. Uh, I just uh, was informed that there are questions in the chat. Edward, do you want to read them out for us, please? Yes, let's see. Um, one person is saying that this was a super talk. Uh, and uh, they say they have a cheeky question here. Where might you advise people to find, I guess, stock lists of old uh, photo books for children? Uh, and Jan posted at Abe Books or A Books. I don't know what where that is. Um, so. And uh, Julian Rosso says, uh, is asking, did you say you're coming out with a history of photography photo books for children? That would be perfect. And mm -hmm. a third question, what about children who are a bit older than toddlers? Um, so when is your book coming out, Rini? <laughs> yes, um, I hope, uh, I hope soon it's my um i this, i i have not found a publisher yet but um i will i will continue to do so um because i really think it's 
it's very important that children learn more about the history of photography. Uh, I guess more important than for a long time, given that, um, uh, yeah, photography is so everyday uh, nowadays. Um, um, so yeah, thank you. I, I I hope I hope very soon. <laughs> if you know any publisher who might be interested. <laughs> No, let me know. You should be able to find somebody. And then the other question was uh, photo books for uh, children that are a little older. Um, definitely. Oh, there's all kinds of um, mm -hmm. books. Um, the Like, um, oh God, where to start? I mean, lots of the story books, of course, are for older ones. But there's also, um, of course, picture books are not the same for like teenagers but but there still are actually Jan von Holleben you did one on um, a book on uh, like divorce explaining divorce to kids and um, uh, which of course addresses more kids from 12 or so I would say well, I guess um, um, I would always say that all of my books address rather never toddlers because I, I can't really work with toddlers so well. All of the, all the kids that I usually work with are age five and up. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been asked a few times, my, I think my target reader group would always be between six and 12. And there's the, the divorce book is rather, I did the whole series with Tina Mann Esslinger. Um, all those books are rather for older kids from age to 12. Mm -hmm. Starting age 12, yeah, yeah, yeah. All no, right. no, the maximum 12. Yeah. yeah. And of course, um, no, it's it's uh, it's not easy to find these books because you can't really you can't really Google uh, photo books for children. It's not really a category. Really? Uh, yet. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of shocking. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Amazon has actually, what's it called? Um, the, the American or the English version has, um, you can look at the most sold photo books or, or books, children's books on photography. So actually the, the Unseen and Seen, um, which won the, the prize, um, the award uh, from Bologna, was there listed as number one. And then of course, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, something comes so there's up, but lot, not that much. Lots of photo books that mm -hmm. you can't, you, you just have to stumble across yeah. that it's, it's, uh, that they contain photographs. All right. Vreni, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Um, I think we should uh, wrap it up. We are already yes. a little over. Um, thanks again for doing this, Vreni. And um, I want to thank all of you for coming.